working on putting my doors on and I've got to locate my top door support and this is where the driver is going to sit so I've got to beef this up I've got to brace it up a little bit so that when the driver gets in repeatedly it doesn't create kind of a bowing on the top of that door plus it helps locate that quarter panel as well as that cow panel when I get the quarter panel in place um, and I got my lower door kick out when I put my lower door kick out I want to keep that just outside of the tire um, had it gone inside the tire then you're vulnerable to getting side impact that will tear that sidewall out of that tire so keeping it out just a little bit is nice but then in a lot of places they'll have a rule that it's got to be within one inch of the tire so make sure you look at your rules when you're mounting the bottom of your body but when I get this one in here I'm really unhappy with its location so there is vertical and you can see how far in the top of that door is and I really don't like that look it's just got an angled door all the way down so to beat this what I'm gonna do is I've got this piece of 50 thousandths aluminum it is one inch wide on the on the the seam that I'm gonna shrink and then on this side it's one half of an inch I use my shrinker to get the same contour that I would like to see in the door. I install it on the leading edge of the seam where the door is going to cover. This way when I put it uh, when I put it in and I cover it up I don't have an existing set of holes whereas if I was to put it back here I would have another set of rivets that just might look kind of goofy. So by putting a little bit of angle into that you can see that at the bottom I get it nice and vertical so it doesn't have that odd kick out look but I can, I can radius it a little bit so that I've got the top of the door in the same spot, but it just looks a lot cleaner. By having it kicked out at the bottom and, and having that goofy angle, it'll expose some of the middle of the tire before it goes to this, this uh, wheel well, um, because this has got some flare built into it, and that's over top of the tire. Now the whole thing has got a good look uh, as opposed to that tire. Also, by putting it here, if I was to use regular rivets, it's going to keep that door humped up. And yes, I can install it and use the same rivets that I'm using to hold the door to the quarter panel, but that's kind of a pain in the ass to get that uh, located, get all those holes drilled in it, and, and hold it in place while you're riveting through three panels. So instead, what I'm going to do... I use countersink rivets on those. Now I can put the door over top of this, rivet it down, and even though I may rivet it and it should clear the back of my panel um, because it's only a half inch thick and I do have it a little bit exposed over this edge, I've calculated it so that when I drill this I can go right in behind it and I'm only attaching my door to the quarter panel and not necessarily through that extra piece. These hidden rivets here will keep the door from being humped up over top of each one of those. I'm only using five of them. I want a minimal amount um, and, uh, and it just works out really, really clean. I ordered these off of Amazon. They're really, really cheap, but you got to make sure that you get a countersunk drill bit for your drill. As you see this one here. When you drill these, because this is fiberglass, it does not take a lot. All you gotta do is put it in there and bump it just a little tiny bit so that you can see how how my countersink is. And then you put your countersunk rivet in, verify that it's gonna be completely uh, below the surface, and then you pull that rivet. With having five of those, it'll be good and strong. It'll hold the door in the spot that I want it to, and uh, it, it just it looks a lot cleaner. I will use these countersunk rivets in several places, including the top of this door. That way, when the driver's getting in and out, he doesn't tend to catch those rivets with his suit and tear his suit. Um, I'll use them on the deck lid bar that we put in uh, in the last video to keep the deck lid sitting flat. That way, the deck lid isn't humped up over top of those. Anywhere where you've got an overlap, it's nice to use those. Now, these are aluminum rivets with an aluminum shank so they do not pull super tight but if you're only using them in certain areas you should be fine now you can see I've got that piece installed I've got a beautiful radius on this door it's got a nice shape to it and I'm ready to attach the door now another thing that I do anywhere where I have a panel that overlaps another panel but they're both going to be riveted down I I cut that out so that they sit flat. Now if I had ran this down, you can see where this would have sat over had I put a rivet in it, that door is going to have a goofy spot in it. Um, so trim those out and then I take a file and I file out beside that 
uh, or behind that, excuse me, so that it sits as flat and flush as possible. This whole thing will sit flush and it won't just sit and be humped up on that. You're looking at losing a full sixteenth of an inch in that spot. So by doing this, it's just a lot cleaner. Now I've got the lower door bar secured. I used the same one by half inch material that I used on the deck lid. Um, I used one and a quarter tube here and one inch tube as my support bar. Um, this is nice because now it slides in and out. I can adjust it. I can get the door kick out where I want it. We could drill it, run a bolt in it. If it gets torn up, we don't have to cut all the brackets off the frame. You can just slide a new one in, weld up a new piece, and uh, be ready to go. I will not cut out the top portion of this roof slash quarter panel area because this is a structural point. Uh, when I when I have this riveted my door through the quarter panel and into this bar That is a really really strong point if I cut that out that would allow my roof to kind of flex and Possibly fatigue or crack so rather than doing that just like I did on the deck lid filler panel When I put the door down I'll actually slide a washer or a shim underneath this and then be able to rivet it down That way when the driver gets in and out you don't get this you know, bumping your door there. It's nice and tight, everything's tied together. Um, and it just seems to work a little bit better that way. Looking at this right side door that is just clamped on, you can easily see that spot that that piece that I built that I shrunk fixes it. You can see how right down here, it's got kind of an indent and that's because this door is sitting too flat. It doesn't have any radius in it. Look what happens when I put my straight edge on it. It's got a massive low spot there and I really, really, really do not like that. So by adding that stretched or that shrunk piece um, on that door seam, it really, really helps that out. And it just looks a lot cleaner. Here you can see how flat that right side door is. Um, having a flat door is nice if that's what you're looking for, but this being a road course car, I would like a little bit more contour to it. Having a little bit of contour in that door actually strengthens it because it's got some radius um, and it doesn't want to sit there and flop as easy. So by adding some contour, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, and a lot cleaner and it just I believe makes them a little bit prettier this is my left side door that I've put some radius in and you can see there how I've got just a gentle radius to it um, like I say it's gonna keep that door from oil canning or flopping or making all that noise and it just makes that door prettier once it's on the car to do this I use a cylinder Whenever I'm doing a minor radius on a door like this, it's always nice to use a, a large cylinder such as this oxygen cylinder. Um, as long as it's clean and it doesn't have any debris on it, when you use it on your door, just be very, very easy on it and give it some pressure and kind of roll it back and forth. This kind of works like a slip roll and uh, it just gives you a nice little contour so that your door is a little more lively. Now you can see my door's got just a little bit more contour to it and uh, that's just going to make the whole car look a little prettier when it's all finished up. This tool is called an edge scribe and you can see it's got marks on it. Uh, it. It used to have kind of a tape measure thing on there but it's been worn off over years of use. But I use this down edges if I need to make a line for say a bend or a trim line or something. But on this situation um, I've got it to the same length as that Clico. You can see where my little pointer is. And I use it on these uh, these marks that I put off my tape measure so that I can mark an edge. Now I know that I need to drill a hole right in the exact center of that cross. Now I can go through, mark all of these, and know that when I put those rivets in, they are in a dead straight line down the top of that door. I can use these in a lot of different areas, like say around this door, so that I know that all those are in the same spot, which I do. I use this commonly uh, to keep stuff you know, just perfect. Now we've got the door on there. We've got it clecoed on three of its four edges. We've just got to do the fender now. 
Um, I'm not going to rivet it down because I'm just not quite ready to, but now you can see the contour of that door and how it makes it look good against that rear tire. Now, there are a couple of things that I've done here that, um, that are kind of simple little hacks to make it look good. You can see inside of that rivet right there, I did put a washer as a shim. That is because this fiberglass piece, I didn't want to trim that off because that's a lot of strength, but I also didn't want to see a huge dent start to form right there. So by sneaking a, a washer down inside of there, it really helps with shim that up. But once you get past that one, you just don't need them. Um, and it, it just adds to that look. You will never see any elevation difference from there to there, uh, but you will see that dent form if you're not careful. Now we are ready to go through all the same steps on this side. As I was editing, I didn't realize that um, when I tried to film the lower door bar section of the other side, I must not have had my camera on record, so I'm going to go ahead and do it on this side. Basically what you're trying to achieve there is just to build a nice stout uh, lower support for that door so it doesn't get knocked around if there's any contact. Uh, this car doesn't currently have a nerf bar on it, but I will add a bar there because there will not be a top bar for the door There's no need to add, you know, a big janky top bar that comes off that bar It, it you know, it just makes it difficult to add your tin work um, Because there will not be that bar. I will be able to trim this out that will give uh, the, the customer somewhere to add his tin work to to put his tin work to and give him a nice uh, room to uh, rivet that tin work up to the body however he decides to do it but since I'm not going to be putting a bar there you can see how how weak and unsupported that is when I add my nerf bar to the side of this car down in the center of that door that will add some strength um, to that section so when he adds his tin work it will all be beefed up and it will work similar to how we do on the other side but because the driver's not sitting on this door it doesn't quite need the same reinforcement that the other side does I've got my lower support bar in place. Now I'm ready to start welding my support rods to the lower support bar. Basically, what I'm using is inch and a quarter 120 wall. And I know you're thinking, 120 wall, man, that's awful thick. This is a support base, and this will be welded directly to the chassis. If this isn't strong enough, and you take a hit in the door, this gets bent or stretched or ripped completely off, you have nothing to go back to. You've got to re-weld to the chassis, and start all over spot paint this is nice and strong now by the time it gets welded up it'll be strong enough that whatever bar i put in it if it gets hit that'll more than likely bend and unless it's a really really stiff impact it's probably not going to disturb this too much nothing that we can't you know straighten out if it's a little tweaked um, if we go further than that and this is bent destroyed chances are that the rail or these bar the door bars or that a post or something's bent further than that and it's going to need some major rebuilding anyhow so this is a small piece it's welded as low as you can get um, i don't really see this being a factor so by beefing these up a little bit giving myself something to go off of in the future have we have damage uh, it just makes life a little bit easier the bar that i'll be running inside of those is one inch od 095 and you can see that is nearly a perfect fit there's very very little slop by the time these get welded on i've got the hole in them we could drill them bolt them um, and there's enough room there so that i can adjust it so if i don't like where it's at i can slide it out re-drill it um, if I want to go in further, I can trim a little bit off of this tube and slide it in even further. So having this mount, as long as it is, you know, two inches, it gives us a l enough room there that we can adjust it and, um, you know, plenty of, plenty of room to play with. I will be putting three down this lower support. I'll be putting one at the front, one in the middle, and one in the back. I start my lower support rod inside the quarter panel one inch to one and a quarter inches. This is exactly one and a quarter inches. And that way you don't have it hanging out the back. You don't have to cut it off. If it does get pushed back a little bit, it's not going to go back far enough to hit the tire and puncture the tire. It's long enough to where it creates, you know, plenty of support on the back of this quarter panel, but not so long that, you know, it risks that tire if there's any damage. The front side, I leave back a little bit further than that. I leave this one back, you know, four inches or so. Uh, same thing, you don't want to get the door hit and knock it forward and puncture that front tire. As far as height goes, I know that my door 
is supposed to go to the full length of this quarter panel so I put this just above being flush with the bottom about a sixteenth of an inch above the bottom of that quarter panel and I do the exact same height in the front Now I've got my adjuster tubes in. I'm gonna check all my measurements and my alignment to verify it's correct before I weld it. Always double check everything before you burn it in. You don't wanna get down the road and have to cut something loose. Also, I am gonna add a support rod as a gusset from this front strut forward. That's a large span. Um, there's a large possibility for damage that will hit that and tuck that in. So I will gusset that up. Okay, so we now have the lower door support welded up. I have not drilled the bolt holes yet. Um, I'm going to wait till I get finished to go ahead and drill those so that I can reset it and get it exactly where I want it. But um, I felt like now would be a good time to weld those mounts up just because I know they're not going to move. I'm happy with where they're at. Um, I did add the little kicker bar to the front, the gusset. Now um, I'm ready to go ahead and put the nerf bar in. I did add the seam support for the door to quarter seam. Um, now I know that I've got the right, uh, the correct roll there so it'll match my door and it'll look good compared to the right rear tire. I am going to add a Nerf bar as per uh, car owner's request. It's going to be a small Nerf bar. It will go from just this middle bar out um, to a uh, probably a one and a half uh, thin OD bar. I'm going to keep it somewhat short. I don't need it to go all the way to the front tire. I don't need to go all the way to the rear. I don't want to impede this... Um, this uh, support that I put in this door so it's going to be somewhat of a small nerf bar it'll be enough for me to rivet the door to to attach it to build some extra stability there knowing that we don't have this top bar but like I say the tin work will come over and support the top of that door this is a road course car this car will be going in excess of 180 miles an hour so um, I do want to make sure that this fiberglass body is well supported. These things do distort quite a bit and because of that um, we've seen these bodies fail before. So making sure that these things are well supported just like going to you know like a quarter mile track where you can do a lot of beating and banging. You want these things well supported. So um, I'm going to add this Nerf bar. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this paint so that uh, I can go ahead and start adding the mounts. I'm going to do the exact same thing as I did on these lower door supports. I'm going to use that exact same system because like I I say it doesn't need to be super beefy it's just got to hold this door um, into a, a, a tight shape so that it's not uh, it's not flopping around uh, at those high speeds I'm prepping the car to put the nerf bar mounts on it and I'm gonna do the same mounts as I did on the lower support bar and I'm gonna weld them right here on this area joining the two the, the vertical bar and the horizontal door bar on the right side and what I've done is I've taken my piece of material here that I'm going to weld on and I've ground it out so that it fits correctly over that seam. Now to start doing this I've got to remove the weld there a little bit but I don't want to use my grinder to remove all of that paint because then I'm removing metal out of these tubes. So what I do is I use my grinder to knock the weld down so that my piece fits better and then I use my wire wheel to remove the rest of that paint. Whenever you're removing paint off of an old car um, don't do it with your grinder. Do it with a wire brush or you could even burn it off as long as you don't get the metal too hot. Using a grinder thins that material and ultimately weakens the tube. In a spot like this, I did use my grinder to grind that down a little bit, but that was because there was an existing weld on there and I had to smooth it out. The previous piece that I cut off, which was the same type of design, was up here, but the problem with putting them on that tube is if it gets hit, then it bends that tube, and that tube is way harder to replace than even you know fixing this section of this, this frame rail. If that section of that frame rail gets pushed in, it's a bit easier to replace than trying to cut that rear halo out. Plus, that is a lot stronger on that corner than that tube is. 
On the front side, I welded it to this, basically this fish plate gusset that you see down there, and I removed it also from that A-post bar. It's just a lot stronger. Um, there you've got a corner which is really, really strong, and this bar um, could fail really easily, ultimately doing a lot more damage to your chassis than over top of that gusset. Nerf bar is now installed. As you can see, it's not locked down. We can adjust it. Now when I get the door locked down in place, I can slide that out, mark it, and then drill it. So we're ready to install the door. I am also now ready to install my cowl. And what I'll be using, I've got these little eighth inch uh, tabs that I've radiused. And I've radiused them really, really wide. I will be setting them on that bar. That way, when I do my cow panel, I can do a large plate out of aluminum. I'll use like 80 thousandths aluminum, and we can attach it to this cow down to that uh, tab, and it'll give us a nice solid mount on both sides. I did have to do a little bit of grinding work on the corner of this door. Um, sometimes these doors don't fit exact and you can see how the line from the quarter panel to the roof section isn't exactly correct. It is off by a little bit. I am perfect back here on this corner. So this just tells me that their mold was off just a hair and rather than have that door look kind of goofy, I just did a little bit of notching to clear it up. My seam all the way down is nice and tight. Uh, I am really happy with it. Once it's, uh, once it's Clico down, it's going to be really, really nice. Having the Nerf bar through the center of that door will give me a nice uh, spot to attach to to keep that flop out of the door and also adding some more rigidity vertically to keep that door from wanting to move on me. Now I can maintain the height here as well as the height of the cowl just from attaching to both the bottom support bar and that Nerf bar. I'm ready to rivet to my Nerf bar that I put in and the easiest way that I've found to do this is to measure from the ground to the center of the bar and how far back the bar is from the leading edge of the door and figure out where my front point is and then repeat the same measurements in the back. Measure from the ground to the center of the bar and then from the back of the quarter panel to the end of the bar. This will give me two points and then I can stretch a piece of tape straight from point to point and then measure the gap on my rivets. I could drill it, clico it down, and uh, be confident that it is level and it's in the center of the bar. On round bars, if you take and you're off just a little bit to the top or to the bottom, you will create a dent in that door wherever that's at. I have seen people use square tubes so that it's easier to mount for that surface. I prefer to use round bars just because everything else on the Nerf bar is round. You got round tubes coming to it, the door bars are all round, and round Nerf bars are just kind of the common. But by using that square, it does make life a little bit easier. However, like I say, I do have a round Nerf bar in this. So I'm going to show you how to do it this way because um, if you can get good at mounting to a round bar and hitting the center of those and not being off, you're going to nail it with a flat bar. So as you can see there to the center of the bar, we are 16 and 3 8 inches. Going back, we are 5 and I'd say 5 8 inches. So as you can see, I've got my mark made here and I've got my mark made here. I'm going to use 2 inch wide tape for this. And the reason I'm going to do this is it tends to bow less when you stretch it over a longer span. Now just to verify that this is perfectly flat, I'm going to take my straight edge and put my straight edge on it and just make sure that I don't have any bowing or any low spots with my tape. I mean that looks, can't get much better than that. I can measure it out and perform my spacing. Here you can see my marks 
for where I'm going to drill and Clico it to that bar. Um, because this isn't really a structural point, this bar is more meant to keep the flop out of that door at high speeds um, and just to kind of overall rigidity. We don't need, you know, rivets every three or four inches. So by having them spaced out, you know, roughly 10, 11 inches from the center to the center on that end, um, 11 inches worked out well. So I've got them spaced out 11 inches. I'll have a total of five rivets in this door and that will be far sufficient to keep this door in place. Now, if all my calculations are correct, all these will be in the center of that bar and we'll have no issues. I'd say we nailed it. The customer had requested a plate style cow mount. Uh, the plate style cow mount basically has a tab that's welded to the frame and off of that tab we will bolt a plate, um, probably 80 thousandths aluminum, and this flat plate will rivet to the cow and bolt to that tab. This is a really nice design because if anything happens his body gets knocked around we could take this off and replace it. Had I had a weld on mount that goes up at an angle to, you know, some sort of a plate um, and the body takes a hit, one, it's gonna have a better shot at breaking this cowl. Um, at this point, if we take one, take a hit, we may fracture this front edge, but then we can, you know, put a brake on it or put some aluminum in there to fix it. But if we break this cowl section out, then we've got to replace this whole roof half, which is a real pain in the butt. At best, we'd have to do some cutting and replace this cowl. Because I want this cowl to take a little bit of abuse, um, we're going to do this plate style and, and save one time, and two, um, we're going to save ourselves a major pain in the butt later on if we get damaged. My next step will be welding on my tab, because now I know where it's got to be, and then I can start whittling these out of aluminum. Another nice thing about this design here, on this particular car, this side, and you can see where it goes in relation to where the fender goes uh, as far as this recess on the cowl panel. Is the exact same design as this side. So we've got a symmetrical design where one type of this mount will go to either direction. This is going to be nice later on if we have to replace these. We have one design we have to make and it'll fit either side. I'm going to start uh, whittling this out of some aluminum and I'll get my mount welded on. And uh, yeah, this is going to work out well. Okay, here is my first of the two. I've now got my tabs tack welded on. Let's see how she uh, see how she lines up there. That doesn't look too bad at all. That doesn't look too bad at all. Look at that. I've just got to mark them, drill this hole in them, get them exactly where I want, and then I'm ready to clico them. Look at that. Man, I love it. I love it. Awesome. We've now got the body not finished, but pretty dang close from the cowl back. The doors are now on, the door supports are in. We know we're happy with the back because that was on a previous video. The right side door has got a beautiful roll to it. The seams are wicked tight. Our cowl panel is now mounted and everything is within a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. We are coming along really well. Well, that's gonna conclude this video. I really appreciate you guys following along. I appreciate everybody that shared it, um, giving me a thumbs up on the like or, or a comment. 
Um, this is all for you guys. I, I don't need to do this uh, for myself. Um, I'm just trying to share what knowledge I have to try to help you guys out. I know it's an expensive sport. I know I say this in every video, but it is an, it's a really expensive sport. And to pay somebody like me to do all this, um, it gets really expensive. And uh, unfortunately, it burns out some racers. This, uh, our racing community is a really small group of people and we've got to take care of each other. And I can see benefits already from you know, helping people work on their own cars by making these videos. I've had a lot of people message me and uh, I'm, I'm glad you guys are finding, um, finding it useful and are able to do some of these things yourself. And ultimately saving that money is going to help you get to the racetrack later on down the road so that the car counts don't dwindle. Um, whatever I can do to help, message me. If, uh, if you see something that you guys would like a video done on, uh, shoot me a message and I'll absolutely put it on the list. Um, as for now, this is the end of this video. Look forward to uh, the next one coming out. Hopefully next week we'll have it. Um, we're heading into the weekend. It's Friday now, so we're, we're heading into the weekend and I'm going to be working on my modified. If you like the modified project, check it out. Um, I'll have a new vo video posted soon. Um, I'm getting ready to work on the grill. I'm really excited about that. That's my, I've been looking forward to that on the modified. So I'm going to hammer on that grill this weekend see if we can make an awesome video. But um, make sure you guys are subscribing. Make sure you guys like it. Share it. Let's see if we can build some more excitement. The more excitement that's built, the more uh, excited I am to make more videos. So um, it's just a snowball from there. The more videos, the more you guys learn. Um, uh, let's keep this ball rolling. Let's keep this momentum. Thank you, guys.